Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm delighted that you joined me today. I want to give a great big thank you and shout out to all of you listening today all around the world. I'm delighted and so grateful that you joined me. I want to let you know that I've made a few changes to my show. The first change is that I want you to know a little bit more about me and that you can now find my podcasts under the heading of management on some of our listening platforms. That's right, management. So, if you're just finding me and tuning in for the very first time, I want you to know that I'm a leader and an entrepreneur. In fact, I have founded or co-founded not one, not two, but three successful businesses. Or maybe I should say three successful organizations because one is a nonprofit and two are for-profit businesses. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Now, before I became an entrepreneur, which was over 25 years ago now, I worked in corporate America for some really big companies like Xerox and Citibank. I also worked in higher education as an administrator and as a professor. As a matter of fact, I still do a little professing every now and then. I'm also a founding partner with the John Maxwell team, and I'm one of their faculty members as well, where I help all kinds of people leave their J-O-B, their job, and start their own business. I help speakers and coaches and trainers hone and polish their skills as well. So if you're looking for a dynamic speaker to open or close an event, Or if you need a caring and experienced coach or a trusted advisor or thought partner to help you with your business strategy or to develop the leaders in your organization, let's talk about how I can serve you and add value to you and your team. You can connect with me via LinkedIn or on Facebook. On LinkedIn, just look me up. I'm Dr. Gloria J. Burgess. Later... In this show, I'll tell you how to easily find me on Facebook as well. Now, if you'd prefer to connect with me via email, use this email address. Just type in info, I-N-F-O, at GloriaBurgess.com. All right? Great. So again, I'm delighted and so very grateful that you joined me today. I sure hope you're enjoying a fabulous day and that you're having a fantastic week. Because you know what? In the grand song of the universe, life is very, very short. It's short and sweet and very precious. So I hope you're making a difference in your own life. Because you know what? When you do, you also make a difference in someone else's life. Now, a lot of folks really want to make their life count for something, but they don't know how, or it just seems so big and overwhelming, they don't know how or where to begin. So they ask me, Dr. Gloria, how do you do that? How do you make your life count? Well, let me tell you, it's very simple, very, very simple. You make your life count day by day step by step, smile by smile, every single day, 365, 24-7. You make your life count by making real connections with people. Now, don't get me wrong, social media is great for some things, but in your real, everyday life, do you want followers or do you want to be connected with real people? Do you want air friends or do you want real friends you can actually talk with and be with? Can I just tell you something? When life throws you a curve, you want people who know you and love you, 
not just people who friend you and like you, right? (laughs) I know you know what I'm talking about. I know that I'm talking to somebody out there, okay? Now, you can make a huge difference in somebody's life today. How? You can make a difference simply by being grateful. That's right. By being grateful. Grateful for who you are, whose you are, and by being grateful that when you know whose you are, you can lead with a sense of steadiness and purpose. You can lead with courage and confidence. You can lead with mastery through any situation. Now, I'm going to stop right here for just a minute. I know that some of you are wondering, is this Dr. Gloria talking to me? (laughs) Because you may not even think of yourself as a leader. Maybe you're a, a doctor or nurse or teacher, or maybe, like me, you're an entrepreneur or an artist. Or maybe you're a student in college or high school, and you have no idea what you want to be or do after you graduate. Well, let me tell you this. It does not matter what you do in your professional life. And it doesn't matter what life stage you're in. You are a leader. Now, how can I say that with such clarity and conviction and confidence? Here's the thing. If you are participating in this wonderful adventure we call life, then guess what? You are a leader. Maybe Just maybe you are the only person you're leading at the moment. But somebody has to be in charge, right? And that's you. You are in charge of yourself. So, you can make a difference in your own life. And you can also make a difference in someone else's life. When you know how to lead yourself, you can take that knowledge and transfer it. You can transfer those skills and competencies so you can lead in any circumstance. Now, today we are going to talk about how to do just that. Specifically, we're going to talk about leadership and gratitude. I am going to share with you about the mindset of a great leader. This mindset is summed up quite nicely in this wonderful quote from Max Dupree. Here's what he says. Dupree reminds us that the very first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. And the last responsibility of a leader? The last responsibility is to say thank you. And in between, he says, the leader is a servant. Now I'm going to repeat that. The first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. And the last responsibility is to say thank you. And in between, the leader is a servant. Now let me unpack this just a bit. What Dupree is saying here is the first aspect in the mindset of a great leader. Okay, and that's what? To define reality. Now, this simply means that you have to have a clear grasp of what's happening around you and within you. And you must have the ability to clearly communicate, to clearly articulate what's happening around you and within you. The second aspect in the mindset of a great leader is gratitude. Now, how many times have you heard me talk about gratitude on this show, (laughs) right? If you're my daughter or one of my clients or one of my students or my husband, you've heard me say any number of times that gratitude is one of the greatest gifts you can give to anyone. I'll say a little bit more about that later in the show. The third aspect of the mindset of a great leader is to be a servant. So in between defining reality and saying thank you, the leader is a servant. Now today I want to focus 
on that very special responsibility that we have as leaders. And that's saying thank you. The responsibility of expressing our gratitude. I've done quite a bit of research on gratitude. And as I said earlier, I'm constantly reminding my clients, my students, my family (laughs) about the power of gratitude. Now, my sisters and I grew up steeped, (laughs) I'm talking about steeped, in learning about and practicing the power of counting our blessings, the power of love, the power of respecting others, the power of honoring our elders and everyone else in our personal village, right? Now, all of these things, all of these practices are aspects of gratitude. In fact, one of my mentors refers to them as the long arms of gratitude. I just love that. Several years ago, I read an article that talked about Marshall Ramsey, an editorial cartoonist. Now, apparently, when he was a young boy, his mother would give him a pencil and a piece of paper in order to keep him quiet during church service. She was an art teacher, and Ramsey must have learned a few things about art from her along the way to his two Pulitzer Prize nominations as a cartoonist. When he left his position as editorial cartoonist at the Clarion Ledger in Jackson, Mississippi, Ramsey actually expressed his gratitude for those two Pulitzer Prize nominations. More importantly, he named the various people who made a way for him to achieve that level of excellence along the way. But several years earlier, when he was asked to list what he was most grateful for, those nominations were not on the list. So what was? (laughs) What did he actually put on that list? Well, here we go. He was grateful for his very first job after college, which was as a high school janitor. He was grateful for a major recession because it compelled him to take a part-time job. He was grateful for being diagnosed with, with cancer, with melanoma. He was also grateful for the folks who didn't have his back, for the folks who didn't believe in him. Now, what do all of these things have in common? Well, they sound kind of like snags or bumps in the road, don't they? But you know what? When we hit bumps in the road, those bumps are actually very special moments. Why? Because they give us an opportunity to take a closer look at the bumps. That's right. Because behind every bump, there is a blessing. You see, in his first job out of college, he worked as a janitor, just like my dad. And because of that particular job, Mr. Ramsey met the woman he would later marry. How did that happen? Well, she was the daughter of a fellow janitor. Now, how cool is that? You know, some folks, when they lose their jobs, they just get grumpy. All of a sudden, they find they have all of this spare time on their hands. But instead of making use of that time, they just get grouchy. Well, not Ramsey. When he got laid off, he used his spare time to launch a second career. And when he received his diagnosis that he had cancer, he decided to reach out and help others. He actually decided to help raise awareness about melanoma. Now, I just love that. Here he was with a cancer diagnosis, and instead of having a pity party, well, he probably did have a pity party, (laughs) but instead of dwelling in that place of pity, He was inspired to reach out to help save other people's lives. Now, we all encounter folks in our life who don't believe in us, right? Sometimes it's our classmates, sometimes it's a teacher, sometimes it's people in our own family. But you know what? This guy didn't let those folks stand in his way. He was handed a bunch of lemons, right? but he knew how to make lemonade. 
Now, I share this with you because as leaders, sometimes we get a bunch of lemons. Sometimes we hit a lot of bumps in the road. Sometimes it just seems like one thing after another crops up in our lives. And the best response is not to throw a pity party, right? Well, we can throw one, (laughs) but we can't wallow in pity. Our next best response is guess what? That's right, it's gratitude. We must cultivate an attitude of gratitude, which means that we must be able to identify, pay attention to, and appreciate the negative forces, the negative people, the negative events in our lives, so that we can be intentional to harvest what we learn and to reap the many benefits that come our way as a result of those negative experiences. Research shows that when you can be grateful rather than hateful about bad experiences, you can actually see the silver lining and see behind what appears to just be a big, fat, gloomy cloud. (laughs) By being grateful instead of hateful, you can give your psychological and physical immune system a leg up. You can actually give it a boost, (laughs) right? And you can, you can rewire your brain. In fact, you can alter your brain and your mindset so that gratitude can become a way of moving through the world. It can become a habit, okay? It can become a practice, the way that you approach life. When I was a little girl, my parents insisted that I appreciate who I was. Okay, that I appreciate whose I was, that I appreciate my sisters, that I appreciate them. Okay, that I appreciate my teachers, my neighbors, my friends. Even when we didn't see eye to eye, even when they said mean things to me, even when people or events became bumps in my road, they insisted because they knew, they knew it would transform me right? It would also make me stronger, more loving, more caring. They probably knew that they were equipping me for life and for leading, for leading myself and eventually others. Now, today's research is now documenting what my parents learned from their parents, who learned it from their parents, right? Here's what I know, and here's what the research shows. Before you can count your bumps as blessings, you first have to learn how to be grateful for the bump, okay? And here's the best way to do that. Instead of viewing the bump as a bump, reframe it. Reframe your bump as a blessing. Now, that's a great practice, a great habit. I also like to share what you must do before you reframe. So this is the work before the work, (laughs) right? And so what I want to tell you is that it's also helpful to look for the good in your life, okay, as a practice as well. So look for the good things in your life. Look for the good people. Look for the good moments and celebrate those. So when your life is going smoothly, when your life is going well, when you feel like you're on top of the world, That's what I'm talking about. Now, why is that helpful? Because when you practice looking for the positive, looking for the good, you're actually training yourself to see the gifts in your life, the blessings in your life. If you can see these gifts when times are good, you can more easily find them when your road gets bumpy. Make sense? All right. In one of my books, uh, this one's called Dare to Wear Your Soul on the Outside, I have an entire chapter just focused on gratitude, right? Now, one of the people I'm grateful for, and one of the people I quote in my book, is Dr. Richard Emmons. He is a preeminent expert on gratitude. Along with other scholars, he tells us that keeping a gratitude journal is actually good for us. 
In fact, it's really good for you. Here are some of the many benefits for the people who keep a gratitude journal. These people are happier. They're healthier physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. (laughs) They're nicer. They're more optimistic. Guess what? They have more energy. They have less pain. They have a more positive attitude. And they sleep better. How cool is that? I can't tell you how many of my clients I encourage to keep gratitude journals, especially my coaching clients, especially my students, right? All right. Now, because your brain is wired to respond to threats, first and foremost, you have to be very intentional about reprogramming yourself, reprogramming your brain so that gratitude becomes your go-to response instead of the typical knee-jerk response when you hit that inevitable bump in the road. Now, research tells us that we actually need to practice gratitude frequently and to practice it with a degree of emotional intensity, right? Okay, we have to be on purpose. We have to be intentional about this. Now, I want you to try this. Recall or recreate or actually You know, immerse yourself in a direct experience of gratitude and be sure that this experience lasts for at least a half a minute, okay, 30 seconds or more, all right? Now, this could actually be an experience of a beautiful sunrise, or you could be remembering, okay, calling up that memory of beautiful sunrises that you have encountered, right? One of my mentors lives on the Atlantic Ocean, and he sends out videos of beautiful sunrises, okay? You can also hear in these videos that he sends the soft sounds of the waves lapping against the shore. So it could be a sunrise, a sunset, or maybe it's a memory of you holding your son or your daughter for the very first time, or someone on your team who just made your day, right? So once you have whatever experience it is that you are grateful for, then I want you to feel that sense of gratitude in your body, okay? I want you to feel, actually feel those feel-good emotions that come from gratitude. And I want you to welcome them and be on purpose. Be intentional to locate in your body that sense of gratitude, somewhere specific in your body. Maybe it's running through your fingers or your your chest or your throat or your head or your feet. Okay. And then I just want you to revel, just rejoice in the positive emotions and that sensation that's running through your body. Okay. And then I want you to just let yourself lean into it. Okay, lean into that gratitude. In other words, let yourself go. Surrender. (laughs) Give it up. Surrender yourself to gratitude. This will help the sensation and the felt memory of gratitude go deep, deep, and deeper into your brain. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, you know what? I, I just can't. I can't do this gratitude thing. I just don't have anything or anyone to be grateful for. Well, let me tell you, if you have breath in your body, (laughs) that is sufficient reason to be grateful. Can I hear an amen? (laughs) And here's some more good news. Most of you know about the movie called It's a Wonderful Life. Now, this is one of my favorites. If you don't know about it, It's a lovely, heartwarming story about a guy who comes to understand how horrible life would have been for all the people in his life if he had not been born, if he had not been part of their lives. Now, research actually tells us that when you really take a close look at the lessons you've learned, when you really search for that silver lining behind the dark clouds in your life, then you remember where you are in your life at this particular point, at this moment in time, then the way that you see things actually begins to shift. In fact, 
remembering the trials, the tribulations, the suffering, the difficulties, the losses, the traumas, helps us know that now that we're on the other side of those hardships, the bright spots happened because of the difficulty. Now, when you recall how hard your life once was and the road you traveled to be here now, the road you traveled and how far you have traveled, you actually set up a a clear contrast in your mind. And this contrast becomes a wonderful soil for gratefulness to take root in and to blossom. Did you know that gratitude is actually one of the many aspects of resilience. Now, before we talked about the long arms of gratitude, well, resilience is one of those arms, right? So that means that when the hard times set in, gratitude can help you bounce back better. Okay, that's what resilience is all about, being able to bounce back after stress or hardship or difficulty. And it also means that you'll be able to pinpoint the positive when life throws you a curveball. As an element of resilience, gratitude helps you recover from adversity. Now, earlier I mentioned that when you make gratitude a habit, it can become part of your physical and psychological immune system that will help you transform trauma into opportunity, pain into possibility, turning your victim mindset into a victorious mindset. So when something awful occurs in your life, I want you to stop, look, and listen. Then ask yourself, what is the lesson in this for me? What's the silver lining here? What's the rainbow that I can find? Right? How can I turn these lemons into lemonade? In other words, how can I be grateful for this awful event or person or moment or circumstance? How can I be grateful for this adversity? And then how can I flip it and reframe it and be thankful for it? All right. If you learned something in the show today, be sure to tell somebody. I want you to share the wealth. Share it with your friends, your family, your co-workers, so they can be lifted up and inspired and equipped just like you. You know what? One of the biggest gifts you can give to someone else is to give them the gift of you. It is to use your gifts, your talents, and your signature presence that exists nowhere else on the planet. So ask yourself, how will I use my leadership to reimagine my team, my law practice, my police force, my city council, my school building? How can I provide a lifeline to someone I may never know so that you can make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others? As we continue to celebrate the majestic music of your life, I want to celebrate you for making your life count. Be sure to join me next week. Now, if you missed last week's show or any part of this week's show, you can listen to the recording at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. Check it out at iTunes, SoundCloud, Alexa, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, and many, many other places. Or you can tune in right here at Talk Network Radio. That's www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash legacyliving.html. Okay? All right. Now, before I close today's show, I want to thank each of you for tuning in, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy Living 
is a powerful way to make your life count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. Please join me again next time, right here, for another segment of Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day, and remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day. And be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life.